Hey guys, today I want to talk about pixel size. I know that for a lot of people who are just getting into pixel art, it can be a little bit confusing to see all the numbers thrown around. 32 by 32, 64 by 64, 128 by 128. How do I know what size I need it to be to get it to look like what I want it to look like? So today's video is going to be me making a picture of a Jaguar in three different sizes just so you can see what suits your aesthetic and then what kind of style you're just looking for in general. First off here, we're working on this 32 by 32 image of a Jaguar. I do want to list some pros and cons about each one along the way. So let's go ahead and get into the pros on this one. Whenever it comes to 32 by 32 pixel art, I would say the first pro is that it takes only a little bit of drawing ability just to be able to kind of figure things out. So I would say if you're just getting started, it's probably easiest to start with 32 by 32. Another pro of this is it's pretty quick to animate. Let's say that you do want to take this, you want to animate it, you want to like make it open and close its mouth. It doesn't take that much time to do it, especially here with these smaller images, just because you're only working with just a few pixels. So if you say open the mouth, you're not having to deal with all these slightly different color variations and making sure the proportions are staying correct. Just because it's so small, one pixel does make a big difference, but there's not that many colors to really work with in this small space. So if you want to change something, you can change it relatively quickly. Then the last pro for this is, I would say it's the best for developing pixel placement skills. What I mean by pixel placement skills is as you get further into pixel art, you'll notice that there's people whose work looks a little bit more polished and you don't know why yours doesn't look that polished. The reason why it is because especially in this smaller size like this, it is, well, I should say one pixel makes a lot bigger of a difference. You can really screw up something's readability just by putting one pixel in the wrong spot, especially at the smaller size, not so much at the bigger sizes. But it just helps you figure out where things should be that we can create a lot of detail in a small space, how you can make something readable. I um, mean, these skills definitely help as you step up to the larger sizes as well. So now let's talk about the cons with using this size. I would say the first con is the fact that you can't get that much detail. I know that for a beginner, sometimes they want things to be rendered a little bit more detailed wise, and you can only get so much here, no matter what you do, you're working with a grid of 32 by 32 pixels, which is not a lot. You can see that here in the detail of this, I can only articulate so much in that size and space. The second con about this one is it's harder to articulate a complex animation. I would say you're probably not gonna be doing complex animations that much at this size, unless you kind of like do some smear for Frames, which we can talk about in a different video. It's just a lot harder to make a complex animation at this size just because you have limited detail to articulate the things that are going on. Then the last con here, I would say for 32 by 32, it's definitely easiest for beginners to get into. It's easy to start, but it definitely is difficult to master. One pixel makes a huge difference at this size. Put one thing in the wrong spot, you lose your readability. Put one thing in the right spot, it can make a huge difference. Like I said, easy to start at this size, but definitely is difficult to master, and you'll find that in looking at other people's work. All right, so onto the 64 by 64 image. We've doubled it in both directions. So some pros about this one, it's a nice midpoint between the smaller size of the 32 by 32 that we did at the beginning, and then also the 128 and 128 that we're gonna do next. I think this is a nice point where you can articulate a lot of detail, but also, it doesn't get to the point where you lose the pixeliness that you would have in the smaller size and you would lose a lot of that pixeliness in the larger size. I think it's just a nice place for your pixel art to live. And I guess I'm biased in this regard. And note that all this is my opinion. <laughs> this is just from my experience. So if you find something else works for you, then great, use that. So to say that about it being my preference, it has a nice even pixel look. So we don't have these big, huge, jagged edges like we do have in the smaller size, which you may prefer that, but it also is not losing the detail of the pixels, which again, will happen in the 128 by 128 one. So again, just a nice even pixel look. You get plenty of room to create detail while still maintaining the integrity of it being pixel art. All right, and so now pushing on to the cons of this size. So one of the first cons is we still experiencing some limited detail here. I know that some people like the limited detail. I'm one of those people, but some people like have a little bit more room to explore details and smaller stuff and add like little teeny tiny elements. Maybe not fully comfortable uh, reducing an object to just one pixel. So here you're still dealing with that a lot. It's just not as much in the, as in the previous size, but you still have that limited detail. Then the other con here is I would say you have to have a better understanding of how colors work. It's best to use a color palette or to choose from a color palette, especially as a beginner. The color palette that I'm using over here on the left hand side is one that I've pulled from low spec. I've used this in the past. I've talked about this palette in the past. I'll put a link below for the palette that I'm using. But what I say when I say a better understanding of color, for those of you who are maybe not have that much experience with art, there's something called color theory and color harmony. And I'm not really going to get into a lot of detail because there's videos and people that do a way better job of explaining that than, than I'll be able to in this video. But I would say that your understanding of how to reuse colors, how to repurpose colors, how to keep your colors limited to be able to create that pixely look still, you need to have a better sense engage on that maybe don't you don't need to but it just definitely helps this a lot if you have that in this size image here so that's the cons for that one 
on to the next one. All right, so here we are, the grand finale, the biggest of them all, the 128 by 128 image. So let's go ahead and get into the pros for this one. So this is the biggest image that we've done so far. So that means lots of room for detail. If you're a sucker for putting all little teeny tiny little small stuff in around the edges, and you're really not that fan of like a super pixelated look, then this is the size for you, I guess, that you would like to start at. I would say this is um, where most people want to start. They usually want to start bigger than this just because it's the most like normal drawing. It just seems familiar it seems like something that you've done before so lots of room for details that's the first pro here second pro is it's great for bigger images so things like uh, landscapes things like specific scenes things like full body images with a character that you really want to explore bigger details you're not having to cut out a bunch of stuff you have plenty of room to be able to kind of put that stuff in there but it's definitely great for things like landscapes i see landscapes all the time online on places like reddit and twitter and everywhere else that use this size or probably even bigger than this size actually to be able to create landscape images and create animations on top of that then last pro here if you're coming from a traditional art perspective like i come from i would say that this is more like drawing and more like painting than it is pixel art per se it is just building up layers progressively as you saw at the beginning of the image i with the yellow shape then building my smaller shapes on top of that as i get smaller and smaller as i work my way forward like i said very similar to painting less like pixel art specifically just because you have plenty of room to explore the small stuff like i've already said 10 times already all right now on to the cons all right so the cons for this size the first thing about this size is that it can be a little bit overwhelming i'm not saying that this is the only big size that you can do but i find that whenever i teach beginners this they always want to make a big canvas just because it's, it's like similar to normal drawing but the thing that always happens is they get overwhelmed with the size of the canvas they find it frustrating they spend a lot of time zooming in and zooming out they're not making much progress very quickly and they get overwhelmed and usually they just stop so whenever I teach beginners, I always have them start smaller because they make more progress quicker and they can animate things faster. So it's more rewarding more quickly. <laughs> and this, unless you're coming again from a traditional art perspective, can be a pretty overwhelming task to try to accomplish. The next con here uh, requires more art ability. Whenever I say it requires more art ability, that just means those drawing and painting skills. If you're not that practiced in art, you may find this more difficult just because again, it requires you to think more like you're actually drawing or actually painting. When you're going with a smaller size, you can cut out a lot of those tendencies and skills that this size requires. You're required to rely on them a lot in a size like this. Then, last con can be a crutch for understanding the power of an individual pixel. What I mean by that is what I talked about at the beginning in the 32 by 32 size. Whenever you're working with a bigger size like this, I find that people don't really understand what a single pixel can do to an image. They rely too much, again, on just their traditional abilities, and it doesn't really give it that pixely look. So you lose a lot of the pixeliness at this size. All right, so let's look at the last image here. All right, guys. So here we are at the very end. A lot of me talking in this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you feel like you learned something. I know that uh, I provide a lot of information, but I also want to close by saying that this is just my opinion. This is just the way that I learned and kind of figured out the things as I went along. You don't have to do 32 by 32. You don't have to do 128 by 128. You don't have to do 64 by 64. It really is up to you and what your preference is. It might even suit you to find the pixel size ratios of your favorite game consoles that use pixel art just maybe use those as a reference point so things like the game boy advance game boy color whatever it doesn't matter to me what works best for you is what's going to keep you going and keep you excited and keep you engaged in this whole pixel art process so don't take what i say as like gold this is just an effort for me to show you what these different things and different sizes look like because I know as a beginner, it can be confusing. You don't really know what all the numbers mean. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did find it helpful and you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. I also have other social media avenues as well, which they'll be put down in the link below. And then other links like the software that I use, the color palettes that I use, etc. will be below as well. Thanks for watching. See you guys.